Um, so we're going to start by going through this book, going to go into the build an application, because I'm already pretty good with Go Fundamentals. I don't really have any issues with that. Um, and then we're going to go through the HTTP server section. Um, and where I'm going to very tediously read everything written. Oh my god, this is a huge section updated by Chris James. Thank you, Chris James. Is this a link to anything? I very much like to follow people on social media when I use their content. Um, okay, so learn go with tests. So I've always thought that having tests for your web application is actually fundamental to having it work well. Uh, and the fact that I don't have that nearly as strongly enough, you know, like they're there, they, you know, they're integration tests. So be that what you believe it to be. But uh, for, I think I would like to test like every method and write every method as if it were meant to be tested. So I'm going to do that. Um, since I already know a lot about Go Fundamentals, I'm going to skip this whole part here where um, I would learn how to <laughs> just do Go. I, I'm, I'm fairly certain at this point that I, I'm good with Go Fundamentals, so I think I will skip that part. Um, the part that was interesting, as I was doing the Go Fundamentals sections, uh, the interesting part to me was to be like, how are you going to actually implement this in a um, production environment where you're actually testing like actual endpoints with real data and like data that comes from a database or something like that. I'm pretty sure that this example here doesn't actually get data from a database because there was a bit in the, the previous sections where there was the idea of uh, a JavaScript front, front end, and the author just said, just hand waved that away. It's like, oh, there's no, you know, this is a Go book, so I'm just going to assume you're perfect at JavaScript, which obviously I'm not, because um, who is? So, we're going to start with an HTTP server. <clears throat> I'm not going to go find all the code to the chapter because I want to actually write it myself or rather copy and paste it myself and then actually read it and try and work through how it works and why it makes sense to why every line makes sense. And also, uh, while going through this book, I've side note, it's called a book, right? The The URL here is gitbook.io which to me a book is just something you open and there are pages but this there are web pages and you know it's it's like it's a website anyway the the, the definition of websites have changed over the years because to me this is just well yes this is what a website is you know you just display information but this class of website kind of evolved into becoming something that is more like I just display information and each page is different chapters so it's it's like a book but mm, I like to think of my books as actual pages that you turn and then like even a, a ebook or a, a Kindle or whatever I don't I don't like calling that a book because to me that it doesn't make sense in my head same with audiobooks like okay audiobooks makes sense to call them audiobooks because they're Audiobooks, you know, you can have a good sense of what transformations happened to the book to get your end result. You took the book, said, I want this, but in my ears. So you say, well, okay, t -t -t audio, book, kapow. Um, so I'm going to refer to this as the book because it refers to itself as the book. And out of respect for it, um, I'm going to do that. But um, it's a website. So, ta-ta. You have been asked to create a web server where users can track how many games players have won. All right, you got 
get endpoint where the name is part of the URL. All right, right away this tells me the names in this web server are not going to be arbitrary text because URLs cannot be arbitrary text. So this get endpoint should return a number indicating the total number of wins. Okay, it doesn't say, well, it's a book, so it's not going to tell me exactly, like, down to the latest tail. Um, but either it's, like, JSON or just HTTP body text, who knows. Post, player, name, same problem. Should record a win for that name. I see. Incrementing for every subsequent post. So I could just, like, post, 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 post. Increase the number of wins. Got it. We'll follow the TDD approach, with this, which is test-driven development, uh, getting working software as quickly as we can, and then making small iterative improvements until we have the solution. By taking the, this approach, we keep this problem space small at any given time, which, in my personal experience, is absolutely essential. Don't go down rabbit holes. Yes, this is a problem I have. Okay. You see me, book. You see me. Um, if we ever get stuck slash lost, doing a revert wouldn't lose loads of work. Okay. Hmm. If we ever get stuck or lost doing a revert, wouldn't... I'm not sure what he means by that. Probably just... We'll see. Red, green, refactor. Throughout this book, we have emphasized that the TDD process of write a test and watch it fail, red, write the minimal amount of code to make it work, green, and then refactor. And uh, parentheses, by the way, when they say minimal, they really mean minimal. It's like you cheat and hold on. It's really raining. Like a lot. Which is cool. Good for the plants. Write the minimal amount of code to make it work, and then refactor. This discipline of writing the minimal amount of code is important in terms of the safety TDD gives you. You should be striving to get out of red as soon as you can. Kent Beck describes it as, make the test work quickly, committing whatever sins necessary. Oh, and sins there are. You can commit these sins because you will refactor afterwards, backed by the safety of the tests. Right because you're going to write another test that says, oh, hey, you committed a sin. Don't do the sin. The test is, like, make sure you're not doing the sin. Uh, what if you don't do this? The more changes you make while in red, the more likely you are to add problems not covered by tests. I see the problem. The idea is to be iteratively writing useful code with small steps driven by tests so you don't fall in a rabbit hole for hours. So, yeah, just make small changes... You know, knowing where you're going. So, how can we incrementally build this? We can't get a player without having stored something, and it seems hard to know if post has worked without the get endpoint already existing. Sure, I get that. I mean, for, for someone consuming it, but we can, we've got magic powers, we can look behind the curtain. Uh, this is where mocking shines. Get will need a player store thing. To get scores, there should be an interface so when we test, we can create a simple stub to test our code without needing to have implemented any actual storage code. For post, we can spy on its calls to player store to make sure it stores players correctly. I, uh, I, I never liked spies. It's like, I feel like I'm re-implementing the whole thing again but in the test this time. Um, our, implementation, our, our implementation of saving will be coupled to retrieval. Okay, I think I know what that means. Or not. For having some working software quickly, we can make a very simple memory implementation, and then later we can create an implementation backed by whatever storage mechanism we prefer. Cool. All right, the test first. We can write a test and make it pass by returning a hard-coded value to get us started. Kent Beck refers this as faking it. Yes, this is the sin we were mentioning earlier. Once we have a working test, we can 
then write more tests to help us remove that constant. By doing this very small step, we can make the important start of getting an overall project structure without having to worry too much about our application logic. To create a web server in Go, okay, well, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be creating a web server. We'll typically call this an insert, and this is a link to the golang.org website. Okay. Just going to do a, a quick breadth breath first search here. Listen and serve. This is on TCP, TCP network and calls serve with handler to handle calls serve with handler. Okay, yeah. Uh, on new connections, except connections are configured to enable TCP keep alives. See, this is I I vaguely know what this means, and I should probably know more. But that's why I'm here. Um. Okay. Listen and serve always return a non-nil error. Wow. It's like you're guaranteed to fail. Okay. Uh, this will start a web server, creating a Go routine for every request, which is kind of like Go's version of threads-ish, kind of, not really threads, uh, for every request and running it against a handler, type handler which has a serve HTTP method, right? It's an interface that says, hey, this handler, or yes, this is a handler because it implements serve HTTP, which is a method that takes a response writer and a pointer to a request. Also, sometimes I will get a little bit confused as for what's a pointer and what's actually the data because in Go it sometimes just assumes like it automatically infers pointers in certain cases and I think that's when you have I don't know actually I think it's when a certain object is a type that's a question mark uh, a type implements the handler interface by implementing the serve HTTP method, which expects two arguments. The first is where we write our response, and the second is the HTTP request that was sent to the server. Let's write a test for a function, player server, that takes in those two arguments. The request sent will be to get a player score, which we expect to be 20. All right. This I actually have right here. Um, you can see I've done a little bit of work. Player server. I've also compiled this. Uh, yeah, the cat's out of the bag. I've I've done this part before, but I haven't gone through the whole thing. But I'm starting over for the for the good of all mankind. All right, so this is our test. We're importing HTTP test. That makes sense. So test get players returns pepper score. All right. So this is in t dot run, which is a function. T, which is my testing testing dot run. This wraps this has a name, and it's got a function which I assume is the actual test. We create our quest uh, using the HTTP dot new request. Right, so we're going to make a request to something. I don't know what new request this takes. A U U URL, okay. And we're saying it's a get, right? That's that's what this one is. Method. Okay, get. URL. And body. Right. So this confuses me a little bit because the URL here is just to <laughs> nothing. Like, it's just slash players. It's not like HTTPs colon slash slash. Localhost 5000, right? It's just saying 
player's pepper. Uh, response, HTTP test, new recorder. Ah, so this is giving me an indication that it's going to be in the a testing purpose. New recorder. Uh, response. So the new recorder. Oh, okay. We'll see. Right. So it's going to basically say it's buffering our, our response here. We're going to put whatever place server responds into the response variable. This request seems like a pretty regular request. Oh, I get it. Okay, so player server, which I have implemented here. <laughs> yeah. Which is just an HTTP response writer, which I assume, yeah, HTTP takes a request, which is an HTTP request, and just says, interesting. Oh, okay, I write to the response writer, say, this is what you're going to be writing. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah, the player server gets this request, bang, and the request says, this is, I see, okay, so that the server here assumes, we're not actually running a server here, because this player server is just a function <laughs> that takes an HTTP response writer. To me, that's not a function. Sorry, to me, that's not a server. That's just a player server, or, you know, this method. It does what it wants. Uh, so we're going to be taking the what we're getting out of that in the response body string. So we're taking the string of the body and saying that we want it to be 20. Cool. Yeah. Uh, not a problem. So we're going to, yeah, just a string compare here. Is it the same? And then our error message. We got Q, but we wanted, yeah, see, so this is a string formatting. Okay. Um, oops. Terminal, come here. Go test. Whoops. Whoops. Go test. How about just go test? There you go. That's that's what I was trying to write this whole time. It's a pass because player server was defined as being this. Great. So, uh, but also this is going. Where this is basically this is bootstrapping because we never said Pepper had twenty points. We just said the test expected that, and so the player server was always going to respond with that. So how about we do something? Okay, so um, all right. Says so I've spoken about all of this, right? Because I've defined a player server here. Uh, uh, complete the scaffolding. We want to wire this into an application, which I have done here. So, um, here we have our handler, which we take the HTTP package again, say handle this function, which is against server, which is actually in a different package because this is package main. Um, so game server, player server. HTTP listen and serve on 5000. So that's when I'm going to go on whatever server my machine is. Um, on port 5000, we're going to run this handler. Couldn't. Okay, so yeah, if we get an error which is what they said about this f function that always finishes in an error. So may as well just log that error, which he does. Uh, I assume this loops. So how about we 
move up one level. Right, because this is Windows. Okay, so now we go to local host. No, five thousand twenty. Magic of programming, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure this is going to get more complicated. Um. Cool, we did that. Uh, let me just read what he had to say about this. So we want to wire this into an application. This is important because we'll, we'll have actual working software, which, you know, obviously it only ch shows me 20. Uh, because it just uh, outputs that and only that. It's good to see the code in action to know that this is actually going somewhere. Uh, as we refactor our code, it's likely we will change the structure of the program. We want to make sure this is reflected in our application too as part of the incremental approach. Yeah, of course. You want to kind of do the whole thing, not just, you know, the part, the testing part. <laughs> You, you, there's a whole po there's a point to all, all of this. Okay, yes. So I have put this in my code. So far, all of our application code has been in one file. However, this isn't best practice for larger projects where you'll want to separate things into different files. Ah, this is this is untrue for my case because I I'm just in the habit regardless of what people tell me. I will, you know, if the test um, book tells me, like, write this all into one package, but I know, like, I've, I have experience as a web developer that this is incorrect. We want things separated into different packages. I will separate it into a different package because it's just easier that way. And obviously, like, there's some aberrations that show up, like, there's this game server dot player server instead of the, the direct player server that he had suggested I write. Um, it's fine. Okay, to run this, go build, it'll create the go files in the directory. Cool. Then you can execute it with my program. Yes, so I'm on Windows, so dot slash didn't work, even though you'd think it would. Silly. Okay, title, HTTP handler func. Earlier, we explored that the handler interface is what we need to implement in order to make a server. Typically, we do that by creating a struct and make it implement the interface by implementing its own serve HTTP method. Now, if I double check in the code here, uh, we have not defined that interface, okay. However, the use case for structs is for hold da holding data, but currently we have no state, so it doesn't feel right to create one. Handler func lets us avoid this. The handler func type is an adapter to allow the use of ordinary functions as HTTP handlers. Okay. Okay. If f is a function with the appropriate signature, handler func is a handler that calls f. So here's a type. And the funk response writer. Okay, yes. So my player server here happened to just be a handler funk. Yeah. Look at main. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's. He, yeah. Okay. Here are handlers. We're calling HTTP handler funk on our game server function right there from the documentation we can see that type handler func has already implemented the serve http method okay my typecasting our player server function with it Oh, typecasting. That's what we're doing. Yeah? 
handler function is adapted to allow the use of ordinary functions as HTTP handlers. If f is a function with the appropriate signature, handler func is a handler that calls f. Right. Creates a handler. Gotcha. As there's no request in this one, though. Okay. Um, handler funk is a handler that calls f. From the documentation, we see that type handler func has already implemented the server HTTP method. By typecasting our player server with function with it, we now have implemented the required handler. Wait a minute. Typically, we do that by creating a struct and make it implement the interface. Okay, sure. Who knows? From the documentation, we see that type handler func has already implemented the serve HTTP method. By typecasting our player server function with it, we now have implemented the required handler. Fine. You know what? Fine. I'll, I'll say yes. Listen serve takes port to listen on a handler. If the port is already being listened to, it will return an error. So we are using an if statement to capture that scenario and log the problem to the user. Oh, I see. He's talking about the code that's coming up. Or he's talking about this. OK. Yeah. What we're going to do now is write another test to force us into making a positive change to try and move away from the hard-coded value. Yes, which was the sin we've committed uh, so joyfully earlier. Write the test first. So we'll add another subset to our suite, which tries to get the score of a different player, which will break our hard-coded approach. All right, I'm just going to take this and copy it into a test place. All right, t.run, t.run. All right, return Floyd's score. Yeah, it's, bit, it's the same thing we've been doing. OK, so it's the same test, but we're just saying Floyd should have a different value, which is 10. So this is this is this is going to fail, right? Uh, oops. Go test. See, he failed. Floyd's score is not 20, it's 10. We want 10. Auric. Very good. You may have been thinking, surely we need some kind of con concept of storage to control which players get what score. It's weird that the values seem so arbitrary in our tests. Remember, we are just trying to make small steps as reasonably as possible, so we're just trying to break the constant for now. Yes, I, I did. I ran this test, and it failed. So, right... <laughs> and when they say just, right, it's just enough tests to make it pass... Here, they're saying, well, if the player that we're requesting is Pepper, 20. But if it's Floyd, 10, right? This I feel like this doesn't bring us anywhere. Uh, but, 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 he raises a fair point. This forced us to look at the URL. I don't like this. Like, we should... Uh, I mean, okay, this is the, yeah, it's the... um. This is the one line. Ver it's the minimal amount of code to get it to work, right? To get out of red. So, you know what? I need to change the way I think and saying, ah, you should have implemented a regular expression or something. Uh, or a 
a router. All right, we're not we're not there yet. We're not implementing a router quite 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 yet. But to copy this, go into our game server. Ba -ba -bow, bow. Strings. Import that. All right, f print to at w ten. Okay. test has forced us to actually look at the request's URL and make a decision. So whilst in our heads, we may have been worrying about player stores and interfaces, the next logical step actually seems to be about routing. This is true. If we had started with the store code, the amount of changes we'd have to do would be very large compared to this. This is a smaller step towards our final goal and was driven by tests. You are very wise, Master. We're resisting the temptation to use any routing libraries right now. Just the smallest step to get our test passing. r.url.path returns the path of the request, which we can use then. Uh, trim prefix. Ooh, I'm yawning for some reason. I'm boring myself. Um, to trim away slash players slash to get the requested player. It's not very robust, but we'll do the trick for now. Yeah, this is I, I, I went through this whole existential crisis as right before he explained it. Um, yeah. Trim prefix. Let me just read this line a little bit. So we're just going <laughs> to say, OK, well, the string starts with that. Just remove that. And then the rest is going to be whatever our player is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna live with it. Okay, now it's the refactoring time. Now that we know that everything works, let's make this prettier. Right, that's the point of this book, I think. Red, green, blue, right? Or red because the tests aren't passing. Green, it's passing because we made the minimal amount of change to make it work. And blue, um, well, it's green, but we want to make it better, better green, right? Which is blue. Uh, we can don't repeat yourself. Yes, so here what they do. Right, so they do the, the if statement. You know, this is a good way to do it. I, I would have just assigned it to a variable instead of doing a function call, but honestly, like, who gives a flying at this point? We're just, we're just returning <laughs> numbers. Uh, or none! Or not zero, interesting. <laughs> what about it? Wouldn't it have been funny if it returned 404? Uh, the ambiguity is amusing to me. Oh, and he's going to do the same thing in the tests. T.run, T.run, but in it, he does assert response body. And assert response... Oh, I see. Uh, assert response body just compares two strings. It's got this placeholder text and fills in got and want. Cool. Okay, yeah. That's, is that really a refactor? <laughs> you're, you're, you're taking one line and you're creating a function and it turns into the same line, albeit albeit a nicer line. And yes, something like the URL is now hard coded or at least the the hard coded bit of the URL is now c extrapolated out and so you know this is like the bare smallest amount of actual test change you can make oh sorry of refactoring you can make and that that even makes sense at all but because I want my code to differ from this as little as possible I'm just gonna copy and paste this Bam. 
Okay. Uh, control tab T for the console. Go test for the results. Be good. Uh, however, we shouldn't be happy. It doesn't feel right that our server knows the scores. Our refactoring has made it pretty clear what to do. We moved the score calculation out of the main body of our handler into a function. Get player score. Get player score. Yeah. Okay, this feels like the right place to separate the concerns using interfaces. Gotcha. Let's move our function we refactored to an interface instead. Hold up. Type player store interface. Huh. All right. For our player server to be able to use a player store, we will need a reference to one. Now feels like the right time to change our architecture so that our player server is now struct. Uh, let's do it. Player store. Um, player store. These will go into the game server. Yes, so player score becomes this interface. <coughs> Uh, for our player server to be able to use a player score, a player store, it will need a reference to one. Player server, player store. Okay, two new types I have to hold in my head now. Uh, player server. Oh, it's a struct, but it's colliding with the the name here. Finally, we will now implement the handler interface by adding a method to our new struct and putting in our existing handler code. Okay. We'll, uh, adding a method to our new struct. So, ah, okay. So it takes player server, which is a new struct we created. And it will have the function serve HTTP. Cool. Okay. So, um, Player server. So I think the player, the previous player server, this guy is is meant to go extinct. There he goes. Get player score. Uh, I see. So this should become something like that, where player store. Oh, it's an interface. Wait a minute. Oh, player server. Is that what he wants? I'm just making assumptions here because um, I should probably just look at what he wrote. <laughs> right, get player score P, which is player store. No, it's a player server, which has a store, which is a player store. Okay. I don't know how much of this I want to keep. I think this is what's supposed to happen. All right, if I can test. Too many arguments to conversion player server. Player server. What? Okay, but play get player score never was never created. You never implemented that. 
by saying this, which is why I have this here. See, the problem here is not only programming, it's also trying to figure out what he meant because the code example is incomplete. And it's probably very clear in, in, in his head that, oh yes, that's what, that's what it's supposed to be. But right now, to me, clear server is not expression. Server HTTP. Okay, how about I delete this? See what the test has to say. Okay, test fifteen. Too many arguments to conversion to player server. Oh, okay, because, yeah, I, I have to change this to his test. Right, because the whole way this is used has changed, and I, I, I didn't get this. But I didn't get the same error he did. It's un, un, hmm, unsettling. Oh, what if I go test now? Well, nil pointer dereference. Yeah, okay. Right, we have those refactor tests. Uh, Prize code that compiles and code that passes the tests. Yeah. Oh, do I need to do this? I think I need to do this. All right, let's go into the main. The map. Player server, right? But this is a game server. Player server. Now is he happy? Probably not, eh? If I go test, yet a, yet another panic, which is what he had. So you know we're on the same page. Great. That's because we have not passed any player store. Oh, in our tests we don't have one. So stub player store scores. Aha, uh -huh, it's a map of us. Uh, okay, so you're gonna have the player name and the and it's gonna return the the value of their score, the amount of points they make. Got it. Get okay, player store. Stubs player store. Ugh. Why stub? Why not just player store? Okay, int score s dot scores. Yes, so we're just mapping it. Cool. So this goes in here, along with my types. All right. A map is a quick and easy way of making a stub slash subs key slash value store for a test. Now let's create one of these stores for our tests and send it to our player server. Okay. We're almost done with this part, I think. Um, 
So that was the test, right? Test get players. Go bang. Okay. Wait. So where's the stub here? I don't get it. And you get score request. Oh, this is our store. And with our store, we create a server. Okay. Huh. Okay. Do they pass? I don't know. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Now our tests are passing, and the last thing we need to do to complete this is ref this refactor is to check if our application is working. The program should start up, but you'll get a horrible response if you try and hit the server. Ooh. Oh, because our main doesn't. How about we go build? Oops. Go build. He finds the main package, does that, and then we call loop cells. Okay, and then ba bang bang. Whoops. Empty response. Okay. Oh. This is bad. <laughs> Not plastic play store, so if I go see main. Game server has no player store. Indeed, correcto. So here we create an in memory. Uh, in memory player store. Sorry, what? Cannot assign value to unexported field store. Are you telling me I need this in here? Oh, that's even worse. Okay, we do this. Uh... Oh, this is one of the, oh, it's in a different package problem. So if I just call that store. Okay, and go back to main. And now he's, yeah. yeah he's unnamed field initialization. You know what, there's, there's only one field, so. Okay, we can test this. No test files, of course. Game server, go test. V good. Um, dot dot. <laughs> Go build. And then we call, oops, this. Oh, it's running a server, of course. And now, now it's my turn to localhost 5000. Very nice. How fast was this request? I'm, I'm just curious. Like, uh, like real websites take like 500, 600 MS. This is like super local, and I love, I love to see <laughs> five MS. It's very nice. I like five MS. There's no processing. It's just taking string sends. So anyway, if we can keep our requests at five MS, wouldn't that be nice? We're never gonna we're never gonna achieve that. Um okay. Go build okay. And another test. So um we have made pitifully little progress, but this is where I'm gonna stop for tonight because I'm tired. And also it's raining a lot. And I kind of like to just open the window and listen to the rain. So I'm going to do that.
Thank you for watching. One person. The one person is me. Haha. -ha. So thank you, me. Um, love you all. Have a great day.